Hi guys, we're here at the boiler doing middle of the winter. I don't know if you're going to call it repairs or, or what you're going to call it. I got the bipod here, tripod, that I'll probably put you on it. What happened is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, I'm going to scoot down in here. Can you see the burners? I've already cleaned it out. Um, I did a, oh, I'm out of, out of, there it is. I've already cleaned all this out, got a flashlight, but the trouble is the baffle there, and that's, that's a whole bucket of crud that I've cleaned out, that's about a, I don't know, two or three gallon bucket, um, but the door in there, I can't work the door and do everything, it's got to, got to slam shut, that's the baffle to the thing, to the, uh, I can't get to it. That's all the fur that opens right now because it's, it's it's shut. But anyhow, the um, creosote gets down there, drips down in there, and got that door so it didn't shut all the way. That's what happened last year when it overheated. So the unit's turned off right now, and um, I cleaned all this. I'm controlling the temperature in the boiler through the amount of wood I put into it. It's not real... Uh, it's just the right temperature here to work on it. It's not cooking you out. This isn't this isn't hot anyway. This is where the air comes in, and I have a you can't see it in here. There's a drain hole there that I put all the creosote, which I've told you guys about before, goes in there. This thing just makes a ton of creosote. It didn't do it the first three years, and then it started doing it. So somewhere somewhere something has happened, and I don't know what. I always got a little bit of crud in here, and I cleaned it out every year. You got. Uh, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 uh, little 3 8 bolts that you take off, and it's just boom, boom, the ratchet. It only takes a minute to get it off. I've got, uh, I've probably got an hour involved in it getting it all cleaned out. If, it, if that doesn't work, I have to take some screws out and pull that fan assembly, which we'll go back there um, and, and get that, which I might have to do that, which I don't like doing that. That takes... That takes a lot more time. I don't have a good way of having that fan on and off. It's just, this was made out of stuff long before boilers were made and you just did what you gotta do. That's what the little bit of flame has. And uh, the house is plenty warm. Well, I mean, I'm controlling it through, the, like I said that, we're sitting at 174 degrees in there on that little bit of wood. It, it doesn't take much to heat this boiler up. This gives you a little bit better better view of what's going on back here. <clears throat> of course, I want to be in the shadow. But you can see down here where all this crud is dripping. Well, if it drips and gets onto this baffle, this goes, this baffle here goes all the way open and swings that open wide open. When it goes open, then the fan comes on. But it uh, it had a little bit of crud on it. It feels pretty, good. It feels pretty snappy like it's closing good. Now, I'm going to clean it up a little bit more. Um... And it, it's hardly even pulling any draft right now because, oh no, I have the fan off. I have the whole unit turned off. That's why the fan's not run. Well, the fan should run anyway. <clears throat> Usually the fan runs with just natural draft. But I have it turned off right now because I just don't need a whole lot of heat. <clears throat> I don't want to overheat it. That's what happened last year. It overheated, <clears throat> if you recall, in past. And it knocked out, the, it knocked out these, these gaskets I replaced. I guess this year before this season started and knocked those out and knocked out a bunch of the gaskets in these shark bites. I had to replace a bunch of those. They couldn't take the heat. The pipe took the heat all right. So, and the house isn't calling. I got the house set on 78 degrees, right? 77, 78 degrees right now. So it's plenty warm in there. Like I said, it's not, <clears throat> it's about 46 out here right now when I came out in a light breeze, light enough that, uh, you don't want to be dropping any trees, but just perfect for cutting wood up. You'd be you'd be heating up just the right amount. Um, there's the beast, just just sitting there waiting to do something. I got cherry in the fire, so it smells real nice out here. Uh, I'll show you what the crud looks like that comes off the floor in there. And I'm gonna um, I'm fluttering around. I'm going to take this valve off and clean it off because it'll get all clogged up and then the creosote won't drain out of there. <clears throat> this thing, this thing when it's running, drops a half a gallon of creosote a night or condensate. It's really condensate. I, I don't think it's creosote. 
I got this is the fine stuff <laughs> it's like I don't really want to touch it but I just scrape it off the bottom all in all right now I got maybe an hour hour and 15 minutes in it but in that hour and 15 minutes I got 15 minutes of making shorts in this video I got 15 minutes of uh, getting all the tools together to get it open and I got another 15 minutes of I don't know what scraping I know but I know I don't have more than about an hour and 15 minutes in it tops. So it's not too bad. Um, like I said, when I first put this thing together, I never had that problem. I have, in, I have insulated this whole, whole unit so it would stay whatever, but that didn't slow the condensate down. That's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that people are going to say, well, insulate that and it'll stop the condensate. You, you might stop the condensate, but I don't know. There, there's the big box. It was, it was doubled up at the top where more heat would. And, that thing didn't make a darn bit of difference. So I took it back off because the cat likes to sleep under it. Anyhow, you can hear now this pump running. That means the house is calling for heat. It must have got down to 76. Um, this ain't really a whole lot of whole lot of movie going on. Uh, that's my chunks and hunks. If you've, if you've seen this before, you know that I bring in the chunks and hunks. And it's about time to unscrew unscrew this level so I can get to the lower stuff. I've been, um, so somebody might say, well, your wood is too moist. The moisture content in your wood is too high. This wood that I just went out and got the other day, I think I might have done a video on it. I'm not sure. That was that hickory that was up there that I couldn't get through. This wood here is 10 years old and it's 15%, somewhere right around 15%. It might even be lower than that. So I, I started out with Cadillac wood if you guys know the Cadillac wood, you know, that's super super dry didn't change it a bit Then I started just burning whatever I came up with didn't change it a bit now I'm burning this to get rid of this because um, It's been here for like 10 years and you can see how see how the bugs are getting into it you it's just it's just dusty and nasty and if you if you I Don't know if you can see that that's oak but it's light as a feather, you know, it's, it's kind of amazing how how you can see the dust coming off of that Big chunks though. They burn nice. I like the bigger chunks I like them this way because they dry faster than just a mass because you got more surface area So I, I try to do that from time to time um, anyhow Didn't make a difference on that. It's condensate. It's the moisture in the air So it's it's like a dehumidifier in that machine it, that's all I can say is that thing is like a dehumidifier and it is just pulling the moisture out of that air before it goes into the uh, Boiler I guess is what it's doing. I got No real concept of when the valve is shut here and the valve is shut at the other end It's not getting any moisture out of it. So it's got to be when it's running it dries the air out before it goes into the uh, burn chamber and uh, I, I showed you the back of it. I'll show you it again that's uh, that's all the wood I got in it right now. You can see those holes across the back. That goes up to the into this box here, and this those are the holes again. Just show you. You can see the light coming through. There's not very much. I don't need much fire to make heat in this thing because there's so many tubes in it. Anyhow. This thing was made, if you you know, you, you can crack on it all you want, it don't make any difference. Um, this thing was made 25 to 30 years ago. Now this bottom part was made about 10 years ago. And but the top part, I've been running this boiler for I'm I wouldn't be surprised if it's close to 30 years. Because I know, well, it was made around 70. 1979 79 to 89 and 99 to 2009 to 2000 it, it's it's pretty old it was made in the probably early 70s no 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 late 70s late 70s because we started um nah, maybe a little bit after that i'm trying to think now I'm trying to think trying to think nope i take it back I, you know, I'm not sure. I, we were living here, and I think we moved in here in 89, so I'm going to have to change my dates and look at it a little bit closer. I'm not sure. We moved in in 89 here, and it was it was heating the greenhouse 
like the next year. So I guess around 1990, I, I think that's probably a better, closer 90 to 90 to 2000. To, so that it's it's still pushing quite a few years. You you imagine there weren't a whole lot of wood boilers back in around 1990. That was that's probably about the only one that was out there was central boiler. So you know this is all just kind of hodgepodge together and it worked for years and years and years um so that's just kind of a you know kind of like the wood splitter <sighs> these guys are everywhere these guys are old old as dirt here that's not a new thing saving turtles it's an old thing anyhow uh, a couple other things on this boiler if you're new here and never seen it before we got four different zones. We have this zone here, which you can't see, which the pump's up there. So when the smoke comes out of here, it doesn't screw up the pump. When it was originally set up, if these pumps were running, if these pumps were running, then that pump up there would not run. When these are off, then that pump would run and circulate down into that big filter assembly. I'm running ethylene glycol on this thing. Back when I put this thing together all those years ago, you could buy a gallon of that stuff for about uh, $2.50, maybe $1.99 if you got it on sale. It took um, 50 gallons, so basically 100 bucks, uh, somewhere around there. You know, the figures get a little hodgepodge, but this thing holds about 125 gallons, and if you mix it 50-50, it takes about 50 gallons of it, so 100 bucks to fill the thing up, and it's the same antifreeze that's been in there for all those years. So, I don't know if it's helping the boiler last longer or not. Never put any chemicals in it. Never even had the antifreeze tested. Should, but haven't. So, that's a walk around the boiler. I think you guys have seen me clean that out before, up in there, clean the tubes out. I've done showing that a couple times. There's I think 60 tubes in there. Once again, if you're new here and never seen it, there's some in the past videos of cleaning a boiler. There's 60 tubes in there. So this is what they call a return tube boiler. The fire goes up, okay, and, and climbs up the back of it, and it comes up through 30 tubes this way, then goes up and then returns back, and it goes out, out the breach, breach up there. So that's kind of how it works. My stack temperature right now with that little bit of flame is 230 degrees if you can see that or 200 over 200 degrees which now i'm down to 168 so i'll throw a couple more little sticks of wood in there to maintain temperature anyhow i am not gonna bore you guys anymore my next procedure on this thing is i'm going to clean a little bit more on that back baffle inside i'm going to take that apart and clean it. it. I just put it on just a hair over hand tight so I can get it off and clean it out every year. And I do clean this every year. Um, it was clean in the spring and I knew I was going to have to clean it halfway through the winter this year for some reason. It just doesn't want to make it all the way through the winter, which I can kind of relate to that too. So I'm glad you stopped by. It's a beautiful day out other than the sun's not out. It's kind of quiet. It's peaceful cloudy like i said it's about 45 46 degrees now it's very calm it's like it's going to snow it's right before like when it snows don't think it's going to snow though we'll see you guys hit the like button hit the subscribe button and if you want to see more of this crazy nonsense stop back in bye bye